But to your point about, you know, censorship and the like total lack of willingness to challenge your own side's narrative. I, did you just see this uh, Columbia Journalism Review report that came out about Russiagate? Sagar and I were looking oh, at it. Oh, it's fantastic. It's really long in depth. I mean, it's overdue, right? It's like way after the fact. But I think this is one of the first certainly mainstream and CJR is as mainstream as they come. Mainstream attempts to actually go back through the Russiagate narrative, where it started, how it was sold to the American people, and all of the lies and especially the omissions. And they take a really hard look at the New York Times as kind of the main player in the story. There were Mm. other villains as well, but the New York Times was the main player. And they would report something that, you know, they would shade it to look as bad as possible with regards to Trump-Russia connections. They would get some other piece of information that was exculpatory wouldn't be in the paper at all. And they got all kinds of, you know, millions of new subscribers to their paper who were there to hear this, like, you know, elaborate tale of Russian conspiracy and the Manchurian candidate and whatever. And the underlying narrative that at least I take away from the CJR report is the New York Times and MSNBC and a lot of other places. They were more interested in feeding that audience what they wanted to hear than actually looking at the facts of what was happening. And you know, you read it, it is as damning as it could be. And listen, the way we were sold the Iraq war was bad enough. Like, that was a, a travesty. After the fact, they actually did some correctives that here's what we got wrong and we're sorry, whatever. This, they will never admit that they did anything wrong here. They just move forward and pretend like none of it ever happened. And it's, it is astonishing. And they wonder, then they turn around and wonder, like, why does no one trust us? We just yeah. don't get it. Yeah, well, we have to make laws against disinformation. That's what we have to do. No. Misinformation, <laughs> malinformation, all of those are bad. And this way, we can control the narrative. Are you going to, are you going to be the one who determines <laughs> what's, what's re- fact and what's fiction? And actually in the piece, they were like, the U.S. has the lowest media trust in 42 developed nations. <laughs> and they're wow. like, yeah, I don't how does think that that's happen? true because I yeah. think there's a, an insanely strong trust in independent media. You are right. I'm, I'm, they're, they're pointing Taibbi, to the mainstream media. You know, these, these people that are, they're just who they are. You know who they are. And it's possible to do now. You can be a real person. You don't have to be a propagandist or a spokesperson for the state. You can be a real person and tell people what the fuck is going on. Because this is a wild game that other people are playing on our behalf with money that they've gotten from our taxes where we don't even get a say in what the fuck they spend it on. It's crazy. It's crazy and it it it, it, it doesn't affect your daily life. You drive to the same place. You say hi to your neighbors. All of, It seems mm-hmm. fine, mm-hmm. but you're dealing with a fucking destroyed destructive empire that has been doing things to other countries that if you saw them if you were boots on the ground you would be horrified if you watched a drone bomb a wedding party in Yemen Mm -hmm. if you were a part of something in another country that we're involved in that our tax dollars have gone to that we have just written off as being not of concern right Right. Which is crazy. Yemen is a great example. I mean, across the board, humanitarian organizations around the world say this is the greatest humanitarian c- crisis that is unfolding in the entire world. And, you know, we are highly complicit in this through our support of Saudi Arabia. You don't see Yemen flags from pe- on people's cars. You don't see the news media talking about it. You don't see them humanizing the, the children that are starving and dying there. And so, you know, part of Part of the way that the information ecosystem is shaped is what they decide to care about, what they decide to cover, the way they decide to cover it, and what just gets pushed off the page entirely out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. I think this is an important part to talk about with this, that with human beings, when human beings work inside corporate systems, and these systems have goals, and they're trying, everyone's working together, and there's a hierarchy of people, and you're not allowed to step out of line, we develop a way of thinking that is almost like, it's a tribal way, and it's kind of a religious way. And I'm curious to know how you guys feel about your ability to be completely independent outside of that and how that's affected the way you think about things. Because for me personally, like having all these conversations with so many different people about so many different subjects, I'm a different person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a completely different person. It's shaped me so – it's like the most – bombarding overwhelming education that it's like very difficult to process but 
if you're in a, a, a corporate environment, it's very hard to think independently. It really is. You don't have the time. You don't have the notion. You, you, you definitely don't benefit from you it. You don't have the incentive. That's yeah, if the you big speak one. out, you're fucking penalized. You can lose your job. Just uh, things that aren't even like out of line. Like I remember there was a hockey guy. He was a hockey commentator. And he said that all lives matter, and he got fired. Holy shit. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's I mean, like what an egregious <laughs> misstep. Joe, yeah. you all know, lives you matter. You know I got my start in media on MSNBC. Yes, I know. So, I mean, am I a different person from those days? God, yeah, I certainly that's, hope well, that's so. that's why I wanted to bring I mean, it up to you guys. I go back and, and look at it. And, you know, some of it I watch and I'm proud of. You know, I did... Uh, I focused on a lot of the same issues I do, like labor and economic inequality, economics, things that I really care a lot about, especially on foreign policy, though. I, some of that stuff I go back and watch, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so cringe. And I just bought into the the corporate line. Now, ultimately, shortly before I was let go, I did a monologue when Hillary Clinton was building up to run for president. It was back in 2014. So this was early on. And I did this whole thing that was like, she sold out to Wall Street. People are going to hate this lady. She's like the terrible candidate for the moment. Please don't run. And um, I was allowed to say it, right? I delivered my thing. I did it exactly how I wanted to do it. Afterwards, I get pulled into an office and, you know, great, Molly, everything's fine. But next time you do any commentary on Hillary Clinton, it has to get approved by the president of the network. Yeah. And think about, you know, I mean, I would love to say that I I did further Hillary Clinton commentary. There's no doubt about it. But I would love to say that didn't affect me and I was just there to be a truth teller. But listen, I'm a human being. I'm sure I responded to the incentives in that system of like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble with the boss. For sure. Yeah. You know, and that's so that's the way that it works. People that's a very blatant example. But oftentimes people know where the boundaries are. They know what they're allowed to say, and so they don't need that direct intervention of censorship. And also, by the way, these people, most of them in you know cable news, they're, they're not really there because they're talented. They're there right. because they're reliable purveyors of whatever it is that that network wants to purvey. So yes. that's ultimately why they get the job, and they understand the parameters of the task. 